Choose or Die is a new horror film now streaming on Netflix. You fucking idiot! Shoot me, not her! <laughs> Written by Simon Allen, Choose or Die marks the feature directorial debut of Toby Meekins. Many fans have been anticipating this movie because it stars Asa Butterfield of sex education fame in a much darker role than we usually see him in. Night before. I think we gotta wait till then. The film also features a voice cameo from horror icon Robert Englund, aka Freddy Krueger from the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. This suspenseful horror thriller follows young adults Kayla, Eola Evans, and Isaac Butterfield after finding an old computer game from the 1980s. After learning the prize money for beating the game was never claimed, Kayla tries to see if she can beat it and gets roped into a twisted game where the only options are to make horrifying choices or die. It all builds up to a dark finale that offers no easy answers, so let's delve into the ending of Choose or Die to explain how it all plays out. Game. Major spoilers await if you haven't seen the movie yet. The movie's cold open sees 1980s fanatic Hal, Eddie Marson, play C-U-R-S-R, unaware what the deadly consequences will be for his wife and son. Faced with the choice of his tongue or her ears, Hal chooses his tongue and watches in horror as his wife cuts out his son's tongue. And that's just level one. We see during the title sequence that Hal continues to face horrifying choices until level 3 gives him the option to make copies of the game to keep his family safe, for now. One of those copies ends up at Isaac's place, where Kayla picks it up and, tempted by the prize and the chance to help her mother, she starts playing it that night. She's unaware that CURSR can affect reality, but after level 1 ends with a weight receding glass and level 2 sees her mother Chaz by a giant rat, she realizes the mistake she's made. Before the third level kicks off, it always happens at 2 a.m., Kayla asks for Isaac's help to work out what the hell is happening. They spot some weird symbols in the game's code which Isaac assumes is what helped the game interact with reality, but a command prompt is missing. Some fucked up shit, Isaac, you gotta be sure before you get involved. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, just get in, you're soaked. They can't investigate further, though as level 3 starts, and it takes Kayla back to the swimming pool where her brother drowned, something that she blames herself for. Confronted with the choice of saving her brother and saving Isaac, Kayla avoids the game's trick and saves Isaac. The next day, Isaac tracks the game's prize money phone number to an abandoned warehouse. There, they find a videotape of an experiment that Beck, Joe Boland, carried out on March 12, 1984, revealing that CURSR was an attempt to weaponize an ancient curse. And go back, March 12, 1984 at... Since we first discovered the curse, we've been unable to identify its origins or translate its exact meaning, but we know it has unusual properties. Its symbols seem to affect reality, Beck explains in the tape. Their power has lain dormant for centuries, but the myth suggests whenever they've been used against a person or persons, they, well, they suffer. Pain, fear, trauma, and the more the cursed suffer, the more the cursor benefits. We've converted the original symbols into 8-bit equivalents, contain them within a simple horror game experience, choose or die. I mean, we gotta tell them, we gotta tell the police, or, uh... See those? Beck's experiment sees an unfortunate test subject play the game and be compelled to eat his arm. As he does so, a wound on Beck's arm heals up at the same rate, leading him to conclude, sometimes, a curse can be a gift. A symbol that Kayla spots in the video is the missing command prompt that could unlock the mystery of the game. Before they can do anything though, CURSR starts level 4 early and forces Kayla to choose between rewinding or fast-forwarding Isaac. Whatever she chooses though, he's a goner as a punishment for cheating the game. After Isaac dies, Kayla is told by the game to beat the boss, and given the coordinates to Hal's house we saw in the opening scene of the movie. When she arrives, it's clear that Hal has continued playing the game as his family has a variety of covered-up injuries, and he fears that it was him who woke it up. CURSR pits Kayla and Hal against each other to crown the new cursor in a twisted battle, where any injuries inflicted on themselves end up affecting the other. Kayla manages to survive by drowning herself in the pool, meaning that it was actually Hal who drowned. Kayla then receives the command prompt on her phone which means she can now control the curse in the same way Beck did. 
Her first victim is Lance, Ryan Gage, a drug dealer who had been dealing to her mother, and she soon receives a call from Beck who is now a successful tech CEO. You've suffered. I've prospered. Yet somehow you managed to beat my game. Tell me, who will suffer next? He asks, to which Kayla replies, only people who deserve it. Who will suffer next?